reloading an offense that led Welcome to back to scoring. the college LSU will have a new world. defensive coordinator in Blake Baker as the defense is coming off of a year in which it was at or near the bottom of the SEC and almost every So they talking about well they're now doing the Harold SEC for the Tigers the charge at LSU. We now welcome in Coach Brian Kelly. Coach, you mentioned earlier in your press conference that this conference is an incredible challenge top to bottom. What will be the biggest challenge your team faces this year? Well, we got to open up with uh, USC and, and we got to finish with Oklahoma. And in between, we got to play the entire SEC schedule. So um, I, I think it's just week to week um, and, and being able to answer that bell. Uh, in this conference, it, it is a gauntlet, and so um, look in a, in a snapshot playing one week that's fine. Uh, you got to be able to play week in and week out quality football. And another gauntlet situation is this will be the first year for the 12 team playoff. Yeah. What's changed in your preparations to prepare your team for essentially and potentially 17 games this year? That's right. Um, you know, I think you have to be really intentional with your year-round workouts. And I think you have to make sure that your team uh, is prepared the right way. And that means you've got to give them the right rest. Uh, the recovery has got to be really thoughtful. And you've got to make sure that you're playing all of your players because you, you, this, is, this is a marathon. This is not a sprint. And you've got to rely on depth within your program. So the teams that have built depth in their program, you're going to have to replace players. Guys will get injured. And so you're going to have to have quality depth, and guys are going to have to step up and play uh, that are key backups. And I think that that's what you'll see uh, in, in this league, that teams that have the depth uh, are going to probably end up at the top. And how do you adjust that mindset on and off the field? Well, I think everybody has to accept the role, right? I mean, there's going to be the, the frontline guys, your starters, but there are other guys that are going to have to accept that, listen, when your number's called, you've got to be ready to perform at the highest level. And so accepting that role and understanding what your role is on your team, and, and that's what I have to be able to do and our coaches have to be able to do to each and every one of our players. I liked what you said in your presser. presser you said, don't deal with expectations, but instead with what we're doing and the necessary things we're doing to make progress. And speaking right. of that, you had the number one offense in the country last year, but on defense, it was a different story. How has the changes in your coaching staff on that side of the ball, including bringing in new defensive coordinator Blake Baker, changed that narrative? Well, look, we, we had to make some adjustments, and, and certainly the first one was, you know, bringing new leadership, and, and I think Blake brings um, an energy. Uh, obviously, his success at Missouri um, was one that I closely watched. I thought his connection with the players was one that I was looking for. And, and again, when you're looking at uh, the elements of defense, it's not just about scheme. It's about the connection that you have with the players, and I love the connection that he had with his players, and I love what he's doing early on with the connection that he has with our players at LSU. And you have very high expectations for new starting quarterback Eric Nussmeyer. What kind of qualities does he have that make you confident in him? Well, first of all, you get, you got to have the skill set, right? And, and he's got all of those things necessary to, to play at the highest level. Uh, but certainly he's got um, the, the acumen. He can play the game um, intellectually. He knows what to do and how to do it. He can take it from the classroom, I guess is what I'm saying, and he can put it on the field. He recognizes coverages. He knows how to protect himself. He knows how to go through progressions. And, and that's, that, look, the quarterback has got to be able to take it from uh, the meeting room and be able to apply it on the field, and, and Garrett can do it. And he does it with the ability to lead others, and quarterbacks have to be able to do that and bring other players with them. Absolutely, and you mentioned that this is the most accountable and deepest team you've had. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, I think in year three, we've been building our process, and, and our process has been about total preparation. It's been about um, having the traits necessary uh, to, to, to win championships. And along the way, um, you've got to have accountability, and, and that is personal accountability. And our players have taken personal accountability for everything that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, from going to class to doing the right things in the community uh, to every day in our workouts and being on time. And so uh, that personal accountability is going to show itself on the field. Uh, and that's why, you know, right now, um, we've been in a good position. Now we hope to do that on the football field. Do you have Harold Perkins coming back on the inside this year. What does he bring on the field? 
Well, first of all, experience. You know, he's made a lot of plays for us. He's been an experienced player. Um, he can get after the quarterback, but certainly he can play sideline to sideline for us. Now, with the added size, uh, he, he's got the ability to play inside out. So this year, you're going to see him playing inside linebacker. He's going to play a little bit outside linebacker. And I know. Um, Coach has got, uh, I think, some, uh, it, I would say, surprises for some teams in the SEC. What kind of surprises, Coach? Well, I think we're going to move him around a little bit. I, I, I don't know that you're going to see him play one position. Uh, it's going to be a little bit about where is Waldo. I mean, we're going to move him around. I think it's going to be the best assets uh, of, of Harold Perkins coming to light this year. Who doesn't love where is Waldo? Coach, thank you so much for your time. Good luck this season. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Where's Waldo? And also, let's take a look at this schedule. LSU has a 13% chance to reach the SEC championship game, which is the sixth best in the conference. Now, the Tigers have the second easiest schedule in the conference ahead of only Missouri. They open the season in Las Vegas against USC, but get Alabama at home while avoiding SEC favorites Georgia and Texas. Now, Coach Kelly also mentioned that this is the most accountable and deepest team that he's had. 55% of his offense is coming back. Now, Greg, after losing some key players in the draft and so many changes, what are your expectations for LSU's offense this season? Well, I'll just start by reacting quickly to what you just said when we saw the schedule, that that's the yeah. second easiest schedule, and it's <laughs> at Florida, Bama comes to you, right, you're at AM. It's, it's like... Fine. We are in a new world now, man, yeah. as far as strength of schedule discussion, that's for sure. Um, one thing that I'm really optimistic about, like LSU's always had great wideouts. That, that goes without saying. Kyron Lacey will step right up. They've added a transfer to that I think will step right into the fold. They won't miss a beat there. Will they have that automatic go-to guy that's going to go for 1,200? Yeah, I don't know if they have a Malik Neighbors right now. It's going to be drafted into the top six. I can't confirm that. But I do think the quarterback situation's in great hands. And in part because of... What we witnessed last year when watching Georgia, we saw, hey, look, for what Stetson Bennett was, he was a great player, but this Carson Beck kid's been waiting his turn. Similar things can be said about Garrett Nussmeyer. We know that Jaden Daniels was amazing, got drafted second overall. Hopefully he'll be a great player for Washington. But I look at what Garrett Nussmeyer was a couple years back when this competition was ongoing back in 2022. We called LSU's game week one. And we sat down with Brian Kelly on Friday, and at that point, it was up in the air who the starting quarterback was going to be. And he said, look, we're going to go with Jane Daniels, but it, the gap between these two is this close. Fast forward two years, Jane Daniels, the Heisman Trophy winner, top two pick in the NFL draft. But two years ago, Nussmeyer was this close to becoming the starting quarterback back then. So, Ben, I think they're in great hands, great maturity, big arm, very accurate. And now I think having waited his turn, ready to relish the opportunity. Yeah, one of my questions was, was Garrett going to feel a lot of pressure because he's yeah. coming in for a Heisman Trophy winner? And we had Coach Kelly on set, and he said, you know, there's no pressure there because he knows he doesn't have to be Jaden Daniels. He doesn't have the same skill set. He has his skill set, and his skill set is enough. Look, he's been reliable throughout his time at LSU. He has to played a lot um, intermittently. He played in the, in, the, in the bowl game. I know you talked about the bowl game. and yeah. do three touchdowns there. So we've seen him be able to process information as a play caller get his team to the right situation so they can be successful. The wideouts, Kyra Lacey, but also the tight end, Mason Taylor, I think he's going to take a jump to the next step when it comes to being productive. And perhaps the, the most important thing for the offense this year is that I think they're going to have a much better defense so they don't have to score and score 45 points every single game. Absolutely, and I think the big thing, too, with Garrett is his leadership, patience, and persistence. And there's been some changes on the defense side. So let's get to those changes on the defense side because LSU football had a number one ranked offense that looked good enough to win a championship in 2023, but a major factor that held them back from doing so was a defense that was far from the top. Now, Coach Kelly's defensive coaching staff was revamped, replaced during the offseason, adding defensive coordinator Blake Baker from Missouri. Now, major changes were made on the defensive coaching staff, with one of the biggest ones being Blake Baker. Now, Ben, what kind of impact do we see Baker having on LSU's defense? 
Uh, there were times last year watching LSU's defense that it was just disappointing. They were listless. They couldn't tackle. They seemed to be confused and out of place. When you watch Missouri, you juxtapose them with Missouri. Missouri played a very aggressive defense. And so for Blake Baker coming back to LSU, I think Coach Kelly talked about it. The, the reliability, the relationships, the fact that guys want to play for him. They understand what's expected of them. And, and specifically Harold Perkins Jr., look, a lot was made last year of his move to the inside. And were we taking away from a great player his greatest strengths, which was being aggressive. Well, he's put on 20 more pounds of muscle. He understands his position a lot better. And LSU's coaching staff feels like he's going to be the same dynamic type player with greater responsibility than what we saw before. But when it comes to LSU's defense, look, they've got to just do the simple things great, which is tackling, shedding blocks, being in the right place. And I think Blake Baker, along with uh, defensive line coach Bo Davis, is going to have them in those positions. Well, one thing I would say as far as just what they looked like last year defensively to what they'll look like this year, Last year's defense was an NFL-style defense. It, it was a defense that required a lot of learning, a defense that was very read and react, and it was a, a challenging defense, frankly, to play in. And I think as a result, there was confusion. There were guys that were not playing with great confidence. And as a result, guys that were kind of scared to make a mistake, which led to, ultimately, mistakes. This style of defense is an empowering defense. It's one in simplest terms where he's going to tell those players, hey, you play fast, you're going to make plays. And you look to it, some of the numbers and the things that, you, that Missouri's done well in the last couple of years is havoc rate. And while they're not blitzing some ridiculous amount, they are allowing linebackers to play with athleticism, which is going to perfectly lean in to what LSU has always had at the second and third level. They have great athletes, incredible athletes that can run with the best teams in the SEC. Now, that havoc is gonna cause more offenses to make mistakes, which ultimately is going to lead to more big plays made defensively, like turnovers and three and outs and things that could potentially flip the field. Yeah, and if they have that balance, Greg, I th think that's that's what I heard from Coach Kelly. He said, we need we need balance. You can't be competitive in this league or any other league if there's not balance between offense and defense. If they're not working together, you allow the opposing coaches really to shut down one side of your offense. And without a Jaden Daniels, I don't think LSU offensively is going to be as explosive as they were before. They're going to need that defense to keep them in and win some games for them. Absolutely, and Coach Kelly, you know, talked a lot about building up in that balance as well. And I loved what you said, Ben, do the simple things great. All right, we're going to take a quick break. The main man in Ole Miss, Lane Kiffin, joins the show and previews what you can expect from Ole Miss this upcoming season. More College Football Live coming your way.